In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. Greetings, beloved of the Lord. You are listening to Catholic Meditation. I am Father Blessed Ambang Njume. Today is Thursday, the 2nd of May, 2024. It is Thursday of the fifth week of Easter, Church Yebi. Today, the Church celebrates the memorial of St. Athanasius, Bishop and Doctor of the Church. Good morning and thanks for joining us. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who raised up the Bishop St. Athanasius as an outstanding champion of your son's divinity, mercifully grant that rejoicing in his teaching and his protection, we may never cease to grow in knowledge and love of you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is taken from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 15, verses 7 to 21. The responsorial psalm is taken from Psalm 96. The response to the psalm is, Tell among all the peoples the wonders of the Lord. The Gospel is taken from St. John, chapter 15, verses 9 to 11. A meditation is drawn from the first reading. In those days, after there had been much debate, Peter rose and said to the apostles and the elders, Brethren, you know that in the early days God made choice among you, that by my mouth the Gentiles should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, who knows the heart, bore witness to them, giving them the Holy Spirit just as he did to us, and he made no distinction between us and them, but cleansed their hearts by faith. Now therefore, why do you make trial of God by putting a yoke upon the neck of the disciples which neither our fathers nor we have been able to bear? But we believe that we shall be saved through the grace of the Lord Jesus, just as they will. And all the assembly kept silence, and they listened to Barnabas and Paul as they related what signs and wonders God had done through them among the Gentiles. After they finished speaking, James replied, Brethren, listen to me. Simeon has related how God first visited the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. And with this, the words of the prophets agree, as it is written, After this I will return, and I will rebuild the dwelling of David, which has fallen. I will rebuild its ruins, and I will set it up, that the rest of men may seek the Lord, and all the Gentiles who are called by my name, says the Lord, who has made these things known from of old. Therefore, my judgment is that we should not trouble those of the Gentiles who turn to God, but should write to them to abstain from the pollutions of idols, and from unchastity, and from what is strangled, and from blood. For from early generations, Moses has had in every city those who preach him, for he is read every Sabbath, in the synagogues. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The theme for today's meditation is Love God. Love your neighbor. That is what is necessary for salvation. Love God. Love your neighbor. That is what is necessary for salvation. Dear friends in Christ, we have to be careful that as groups, associations, 
and as a church, we are not more strict, insistent, rigorous, and stringent with our rules, principles, and regulations over and above the rules laid down by Christ himself. Associations, groups, and organizations have the right to set up a code of conduct for their members. The church too has that right because it is an ensemble of believers and different churches have different rules. What is a rule for one may not apply to another. For example, in some churches, a member must have their church or Christian contribution card marked before they partake in communion. For others, it is not a must. It is left to the consciences of the members. In other churches, members living together receive communion, whether wedded in church or not. For other churches, if not wedded in church and living together, members are barred from receiving communion. Now, nowhere do we read these laws in the Bible. They are laws of the church, principles and regulations, code of ethic for members of the church made by church authority. This means some of these laws could be adjusted. This is the reason some have left the church and have gone to other churches when they find the rules too stringent and they console themselves saying, after all, God is one. It is the same God we worship. For some groups and associations, bereaved members do not have the privilege of having a condolence envelope handed to them as was handed to others because they did not pay their dues or did not contribute when another member was bereaved. They even run the risk of not having members attend the funeral, and if they do, perhaps not in their uniform, to show disregard for that member. But nowhere did Christ say so, that we should go and attend funerals based on those who paid dues or not that attending funerals or supporting a bereaved member is based on their payment of dues. Again, remember, beloved, not saying that these rules and regulations are not necessary, but beloved, we pay lots of emphasis on these things that are not the essence. And members will argue why they should not attend nor support based on group ethics. Neglecting a Christian duty and a command of Christ. And some of these group laws are not actually group laws, but laws of individuals imposed on other members just so to exert their authority and show that they are in charge. We may be stricter than God is. We may make entry into heaven very difficult for others as though heaven were a private room. We are making it appear it is do me, I do you. Because you did not pay dues and did not attend my own funeral, I will not attend yours. But is that a Christian behavior? We are not saying again that we should be lax or that we should let Christians do as they please or not take up their duties committedly. But we should also be careful not to discourage and scare away those who come with a sincere heart to find God. Do we realize that some may not have truly had the reason why they did not contribute at that time? But who cares? Since you did not contribute, you have a penalty. No one will attend your funeral. These and many more are some of the stringent rules that we impose on members, and these laws have scared many away. In scripture, Jesus frowns at the meticulous keeping and respect of human laws and traditions over divine laws. Confirm Mark chapter 7, verses 7 to 9. Let us not burden people with laws that are not necessary for salvation. God will not ask us on the last day at judgment whether we pay dues or not. 
He will not ask us on the last day at judgment whether we wore the group uniform or not. He will ask us if we fed the hungry, if we buried the dead, if we gave water to the thirsty, if we clothed the naked. Today's first reading represents a similar scenario. As the number of believers was increasing, the number of converts from paganism was also swelling up. The Jews, who were the first to receive the message, thought they were the bona fide members. Therefore, they began to impose some principles on the Gentile converts. One of such was circumcision. As Jews, to be circumcised was normal for them. It was their custom and tradition. So for all pagans who became converts, they began to impose circumcision on them. They too had to be circumcised. But did Jesus say that? It was to believe in Christ and believe in the gospel, full stop, circumcised or not. Circumcision was not necessary for the people to enter heaven. There were some uncircumcised who were even more practicing Christians than those who were circumcised. Let us focus on the essence, not on accidents. Don't make laws burdensome for people who seek God. Groups that Christians joined for prayer and to seek heaven have become social groups and social gatherings with many financial contributions. Devoted members are no longer evaluated in terms of prayer or seen as those who pray, no, but those who pay all their dues. If you care, do not attend any meeting, but pay all your dues. You will be valued over one who attended all the prayers yet could not pay dues. Is it what takes people to heaven? Is it money that takes us to heaven or prayer? And I tell you, we are beginning to miss the focus. We begin to insist on our own laws and traditions. You must wear the uniform. Because you did not wear the uniform, a heavy fine is levied on you. But you were there. And perhaps you even prayed better than those who wore the uniform. But who cares? It is about the externals. And this is how many times we have focused on those laws and we are scaring many away who come with a genuine and sincere heart to seek God. Finally, from today's reading, we also learn that problems in the church are never solved by an individual. When this problem was brought to the apostles, they held a council, the Council of Jerusalem. The church has always learned to solve problems at councils, not as individuals. So if you have problems, be it in the parish, we have the parish pastoral council, where issues are deliberated and solutions are provided. If we have problems in the diocese, there is a curia. There is also the diocesan synod. And this is how the church has learned to solve her problems, not as individuals. Even in your groups and associations, do not take decisions alone because you are the boss. Call for a meeting, call for gatherings, and let people sit and discuss and put their heads together because the church is no one man's business. Let us pray for that grace, beloved, that we may always work as a community and not burden others with things that are not necessary for salvation. Let us focus on those things that will take people to heaven. St. Athanasius, an Egyptian bishop and theologian, played a very important role in the strengthening of the Christian faith against Arianism. This heresy, which originated with Arius, a priest from Alexandria, and which denied the divinity of Christ, spread quickly throughout the church. As bishop of Alexandria for 45 years, Athanasius did his best to fight this heresy and uphold the divinity of Christ. He even suffered exile five times on account of his stand. He died in the year 373. Through his intercession, may we always insist on the things that are necessary for salvation and learn to work in community, in councils, and in synods to solve the problems that arise in the church. We wish a happy feast day to all those who go by the name Athanasius and to institutions named after him. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. 
go back to your groups, to your associations and organizations and insist on things that are necessary for salvation, not on human customs and traditions.